Hello friends. Today we are into UiPath interview question set number two. Yesterday I have released set number one. Hope you guys have found it useful. So let's go through another set of questions and prepare ourselves for the interview. All right. So the very first question um, that you might encounter during your interview talk about different types of variables and arguments. This is again a very basic question. Okay. Now remember, during the interview, um, the way you answer, right? You should have an understanding. Um, if you have read somewhere and trying to answer, definitely the interview panelists will get to know that you are not no, you do not know practically. You just have read somewhere and trying to uh, answer, right? So you must know. So during this class, I am going to show you a couple of demos. So you should go through those demos before appearing for an interview. Okay. So most used variables. So you, you have seen string, integer 32, boolean, generic value, array, data table, list. These are the different types of variables. You must have seen it if you have used UiPath. Now the next question is different types of arguments. Now um, uh, the types of arguments uh, that you can while creating an argument, you can create is either you can keep it as in or out or in out okay so this these are the three different things okay now for all of this this argument could be a interesting question that you must i mean most of the during the interviews you will get this question okay now for this what you do go to your channel uh, go to my channel and here you simply type uh, arguments i hope you guys have already subscribed to our channel so here uh, in the video section, right, go to the video section and in the video section, hit on this search button and start typing, let's say argument and hit on enter. The moment you do this, I have created multiple videos, 10 minutes, 9 minutes. So go through this because once you go through this, you'll be very, very confident while answering this. What is an argument? How many types of in, out, in, out, how it works? So all of these things I have explained and this will help you. All right. Let's move on to our next question. Okay. Let's move on to our next question. So the next question is, uh, give it a second. Okay. What is the difference between array and list? Okay. Difference between array and list. Again, this is a very common question. Uh, again, array is a variable type which enables you to store multiple values of same type. Okay, so let's say I want to store uh, array of numbers or array of string, right? And it has a fixed size. So while I'm creating, if I have to set five uh, values into it I, in an array, so I will set it as five and it's going to have only the fixed size. Okay, but in case you want to keep it in a dynamic way. I want to have multiple set of values, right? So list is again kind of an array, but again, this is very dynamic. This will collect the values that does not have a fixed number of elements. So you do not know whether it will be 5 or 10 or 12. That is where I'll be using a list. So this is what you have to explain to the interview panelist. Okay. All right. Now let's move on to the next question. What is the difference between full selectors and partial selectors okay full selectors and partial selectors remember the full selector contains all the ui interface elements including the top level window let's say if i select the browser so it will select it will know it is a google chrome browser uh, which website you are in right what you have opened so it will collect all the attributes that is the full selector it is generated by basic recorder recommended while working on multiple windows. For example, I'm working on a browser. I'll be working on an application. I'll be switching between multiple application. That's where I'll be using a full selector. Similar way, a partial selector do not contain information about the top level window. Okay. So let's say I have to work only on, on this browser. What I will do, I'll use an open uh, browser activity and I'll open this browser. After that, I'll be using something called attach uh, browser activity or attach window activity where it will store the top level information. 
and then I'll be using the selectors. So that is where it will be called as partial selectors. Now the question is you might be confused, okay, what it is and if you are very new to it. So what you do, go to uh, my channel, click on the videos, okay, and here in the search button, just type selectors and hit on enter. Okay, so the moment you do this, you have introduction to selectors, difference between full selector and partial selector. So this is a very, very critical video, just seven minutes. Please spend seven minutes and watch this video completely. Okay, because this question will definitely come in your, during your interview. Okay, difference between the full selector and partial selector. So please go through this seven minutes video. This will be very, very, very useful to you. Okay. All right, so that's where you'll understand basic recorder, desktop recorder, how it works and all of that. Seven minutes. Please spend your seven minutes time. Let's move on to our next question. What is UiPath Explorer? Okay, what is UiPath Explorer? Um, uh, so for this one also, I have a video. It is an advanced selector tool by UiPath, which gives you option to customize your selector. Okay, so for this simply go through this 13 minutes video uh, UI Explorer in case you know about it then your answer is quite clear. Okay, this is an advanced tool which will help you to customize your selectors. So if you are not at all aware what is a selector, please, please go through, please spend some 30 minutes uh, time just to go through this introduction to selectors video and couple of other videos that I have created on selectors. Okay, what you do go to the playlist. And in the playlist, you have something called uh, selectors. Let me, okay, enhance selector. Uh, okay, this, this is the one, UiPath selectors playlist. Okay, so this has got some 17 videos. So probably maybe one hour. So spend that one hour because selectors questions will be very, very critical questions they will ask you on selectors. So go through this playlist. Okay, done. Now let's move on to our next question types of recordings available in UiPath. Okay. How many types of recordings available in UiPath? So once you open UiPath Studio, here in the recording option, you have all of these options. Basic recorder, desktop recorder, web recorder, image and Citrix recorder and computer vision. Okay. So what you do, if you highlight uh, your pointer to let's say basic recorder, generates a full selector for each activity and no container activity. So it creates the full selector for each activity desktop suitable for all types of desktop apps generates contain container activities and par partial selectors okay so all of this i have video please watch that difference between full selector and partial selector if you watch this this all this will be clear and you should know how many different types of recordings are available okay if you simply answer the interview panelists will know okay you are aware of these things Great. Let's move on to our next question. Okay. So the next question is how to publish any project in UiPath. Okay. Let's see. Let's get a demo. So if you have attended my uh, orchestrator classes, I have shown you once you have created a project, right? Here is the publish button. You hit on the publish button and this button is going to publish the entire package to orchestrator. Okay, so this is one option. The second option, how do I run it locally? Now to run it locally, this is the command you should remember. Percentage program data percentage UI path. Okay, can make a note of this. So what you do, you open Windows run, Windows R. Okay, and here you paste it and hit on OK. The moment you do this, this folder, okay, this particular folder, uh, whatever XML files, if you store it over here from this also, you can publish it. So these are the two different ways locally and the other one is through orchestrator. Okay, now let's move on to our next question. How to save credential in Windows and use in UiPath? Okay, how to save credentials in win, uh, Windows and use in UiPath? Okay, so this question is very, very important. Uh, generally, they will ask you what is the way to store your credit. So they are asking about something called credential manager. Okay, so go to videos on my channel and here, please watch this video. Very, very important. Simply type credential and hit enter. Okay. And here you should see a, a video called credential manager. Okay, give, give it a second. Uh, 
okay so credential manager 7 minutes video please watch this video this is very very important for you what is credential manager so on windows if you type credential manager okay so there is there is something called windows credential manager so using this how to store the password how to use it this is a 7 minutes video please watch it okay so that way you will be able to answer this question clear now uh, let's move on to our next question what is exception handling okay what is exception handling exception handling deals with handling of errors very simple while execution of activities so whatever activity is there in your uh, ui path so while running an activity if there is an error this exception handling comes into picture which will catch it which which will throw rethrow so these are the different exception handling activities try catch throw rethrow terminate workflow and all of this so they will ask you um, you know how to use try catch how to use throw how to use rethrow terminate workflow and all of that so let's have a small demo so try catch uh, i have a video on my channel again search for try catch now let's look at the throw rethrow and terminate workflow okay so what is the difference between them and how to use it for example let's say let me try rethrow okay or let me type throw okay so throw throw means throws an exception so this is quite used in during the re framework uh, throw i mean i want to throw uh, from one block uh, from one workflow i want to throw an error to a uh, workflow outside of it okay so i'll be using throw rethrow rethrows an exception previously caught let's say while uh, running the activity number one there was an error and you have thrown it then you went to activity number two three four five um, uh, and there you are using a rethrow so what would happen whatever the uh, error was caught in the activity number one it will rethrow the same error previously caught error will be thrown that's the meaning and the third one is terminate workflow okay terminate workflow terminates the running workflow instances so it will terminate so uh, if you use this it is going to stop the entire execution terminate the running workflow instances uh, and raises the completed event in the host and reports error information okay so that is where we'll be using the terminate workflow so these are the three things you should be slightly aware of while going to the interview all right let's move on to our next act, uh, question difference between throw rethrow terminate workflow okay just now we have seen this so these are the couple of questions guys and i have shown you a couple of demos uh, what you do uh, the videos that i am referring okay Bef so these are the questions and you know where is the answer please go through those videos uh, take a notebook make a note how it worked so once you go through them then go for the interview you should be able to clear it okay they will be happy about how you are answering and the level of deep understanding you have that is required not your answers how deeply you can answer it how what is your understanding if you could show that during the interview you are going to get selected remember this point okay thank you guys for watching this again tomorrow i'll be coming up with new set of questions which you should watch thank you very much have a great day